sunshine sunshine and not a cloud oh no lovely billowy clouds blue skies happy monday come on in welcome to the shack shack can you hear me okay anybody there we always come in a little bit early don't we just so that we can we can check the volume right so here i am all ready all dressed up we know where to go is anybody there apart from me i hope so yeah come on i know you're there good morning there you go i just need one sign and paul you're in the building with me too i'm glad to have your company can you hear me too is the volume okay yes sound is good thank you right so back on the bus off to camelot again I am enjoying Camelot. It's, um, I mean, it's a big project, I know. And this is like day two, four, five of Camelot, you know. But the thing is, it's a vehicle, isn't it? It's a vehicle. We're learning different things. We're hanging out together. We're building. I mean, I bet the Bayou Tapestry took a bit longer than three weeks. <laughs> so let's get together. Let's all gather and then we'll, we'll crack on, shall we? Um, I think it's great just to hang out together. There you go. I mean, that's what the Shack Shack is all about. Safe, happy and creative. Stay home and craft. And the whole object of the exercise is that twice a week on Mondays and Wednesdays, you and I hang out in the shack and we doodle or we colour in. We keep each other company. We learn a few tricks along the way. It's a safe environment, isn't it? And um, and on Tuesdays, of course, our Paul's, um, he's doing groovy the Groovy Tuesday Shack Shack. And good news indeed. I spoke to Linda Williams yesterday and Paul as well. And um, and we've got a little treat lined up for all you groovers next Tuesday because we've got this new kit. We were um, we are going to try and do a double up. So in other words, Linda, all the way over in Wales, is going to be joining Paul in the shack. Yes. How about that then? So Groovy Tuesday just got a whole lot more exciting, didn't it, Paul? Yeah, because Paul then and Linda are going to be working together. I think this will be good. Maybe not every week, but certainly next Tuesday we're going to give it a go. I know. Great, isn't it? So are we, are we up for Camelot? Are we nearly there? One minute to... Come on, stretching exercises. I tell you what, I've put on so much weight, it's not savoury anymore. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I can't stop eating. <laughs> it's comfort eating, isn't it? Or is it just our age? I don't know. I don't know. It's all right, though. Safe, happy, healthy. A few pounds, we can shed them later. Hey, eh? That's right. That's what leggings were made for. <laughs> Okay, come on then, guys. Let's get started. It's 10 o'clock. Welcome to the Shack Shack. Good morning. Happy days. And we're off. The bus is off. And we're going to doodle today. We did do a lot of doodling. If you're new to the Shack, let me show you where, we, where, we're, um, where we've been at. There we go. Look. Look at my lovely speckled paper. I love it. Do you remember when we were in the um, Moment of Clarity on Friday and I was showing you how to flick ink at, um, at a, uh, for a background? And then this was just a splatter page. I love it. Years ago, there used to be, um, there used to be a paper stock, really expensive. We did all our stationery on it 30 years ago. And it was called Confetti. And it was just like this, exactly like this. And it was really, really pricey. So now I know how to make confetti, as in the paper stock. So what, we, what we've been doing is, what we'd done is, we'd, we'd done the jousters. We'd, we, they were fun, weren't they? Just a little recap now. We did the little people, the king and the queen, and the jousting party. We had the great big grand bandstand with the... Fl with the um, flags we did try we did that as well didn't we do you remember as a little intermezzo we went happy birthday and we did a, a calligraphy swirl which many of you i've seen loads of beautiful artwork on on facebook live on clarity worldwide with that not facebook live now let's have a look so to so the job 
what we were going to do was transfer this now and I, I decided to go with the buff. Do you remember we said? And so you can see that I've transferred mine to the buff paper ready for inking today. Yeah, just got the right. So I was going to, what I thought would be really cool this morning is first of all, just in case you're not sure what I'm talking about when I say transfer, I thought I'd give you a couple of tips and tricks on how to transfer. And then we'll look at a couple of different surfaces to transfer onto. You know, it's really fascinating because I've been really getting into the lino cutting and, and all the things that we do here in the Shack Shack, that's exactly what the lino cutters do. And um, yeah, and we stampers, are, it's no different. What we're doing here is exactly what you would do to transfer artwork to lino. So it's, it's, we're halfway there, okay? Now, there are a couple of things that you need, you know, like tools. Everybody happy? You all right? Everybody happy? Paul, we all, we all, um, we all in the building, all right? Everybody there? <laughs> have you done this bit? Have you, have you transferred? Hands up if you've done it. If you haven't, don't worry. Don't worry at all. Just have a cup of tea and, and just enjoy the company and watch. I want to show you a couple of tricks. When we, when we did the sketching, we did it on tracing paper. Let's have a quick recap, right? We worked on tracing paper. And the idea is that we, we drew it on tracing paper and then get a bit of clean so there's not so much chatter in the background, so much noise. Right. So we drew it on tracing paper. And then the idea is, you see, you, so all the lead, what did we use to, to draw it on tracing paper, well, we used pencils, didn't we? So you can use an HB pencil, for example. See, now I'm a big fan of these pencils, the sketching pencils for drawing, only because you've got different, different thicknesses and different darknesses. So you've got the H for hard and the B for black. So soft, the B, the B pencils are softer and therefore blacker. And if you look at my artwork here, you know exactly Obviously, it's to do with pressure as well. But if you use an, a hard pencil, let me just show you over here. That's hard, right? If I use a black pencil, I'm just using a 2B. Big difference. You see the difference? So there you go. One's hard, one's soft. And you know when you're tracing through, if you can't see, if you, well, let's have a look. So what we do is we've got all the graphite and the lead on this side. So to transfer it, we got choices. We can take a piece of the buff. This is the, this is the buff that I use. There are two different colors in here you can pick. We've got this really nice buff paper. So there's light buff and then there's dark. It changes color, there it's darker. And then there's black in there as well. So you've got light buff, dark buff and blah, blah. Light buff, dark buff and black. And I've gone with a light buff. So what we can do, you could, you could transfer it on end, onto anything, but I just thought it'd be nice, this kind of, I tested it, look, and I thought that this would look really cool. I just did one of the little ladies in greys and different pinks and yellows, and I like it on, you know, not, not on sharp white. I thought, well, you know, it's supposed to be a, a, a 700 year old tapestry or something, or 600 years. It's quite new. <laughs> I've got to tone down the background a bit. Um, so the way to transfer it is once you've drawn it on this side, then you, you, oh, let's take a piece of this, you flick it over like that, right? And then you can transfer it straight away. Now on this side, what I would suggest is that you use a harder pencil. So I've got like 4H, yeah? You've got choices here. Let me show you. So now, for example, if we take just this little fella here, right? If I just go through like that and transfer it on the other side, and it just this is just a little recap really. Most of you know exactly how this works now. When I take that away, see, it, it doesn't show, it shows plenty. Look, hang on, let's go to this camera. You can see it shows plenty, certainly enough to redraw the picture. 
So this is quite a labour intensive thing, right? Because you've drawn it once, then you've got to flip it over, especially with something like the tapestry, right? Which is l l lots of detail. So, so I was looking at this and again, I know it's not a race and so on. It isn't because we're supposed to be in the zone, in the now, right? That's fine. Life is now, now. And, uh, and so, you know, we're supposed to enjoy the process. But when you, when you want to move forward, there are tricks, there are techniques, if you've got the gear. So you can do the traditional way, and this is the point. You can flip it over, you can trace it all out, then you'll end up with, um, with a, a rough sketch, and then you can ink it, right? You almost have to go back over it lightly with a pencil just to redraw it. Same on lino. It's no different on lino, right? Or I was looking at it and I was thinking, who's got a light wave? Anyone in this building got a light wave, right? Because I was in a bit of a scramble, right? So I always have a light wave to hand. And this isn't me trying to sell you a light wave. I mean, if you want to buy one, we've got them. And I, I did ask Paul to put a special price on them um, because I'm, I'm shining a light on them. And I said, listen, if I'm going to shine a light on them, then at least make them um, cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we sell these light waves, don't we? Now, if you're using, there are certain, obviously, there are certain thicknesses of card. It doesn't matter how bright the under light is, you won't be able to see through it. But for example, this particular, let me show you. If I, if I come in on this camera, right, and you can see, um, if I, if I bring up the light, let's just take this particular piece of card here and pop that over there like that right obviously can't see through it now let's see one two three and now I can see you see I can see can't see graduated one two third light brightest light and I can see exactly what I'm doing and that my friends is how I did this that's how I I whizzed around um, and I, I coloured in. Uh, sorry, I, I cut, I traced over all the all the images, and I just want to show you, just in case you're new to to this underlighting idea. If I take a bit of, let me just, I'm just lining it up because I've done everything. So I just want to show you now what I'm doing. I'm just taping it down so it doesn't move for the moment while I'm working on it, and then I'll take a pencil. Now, again, I'm going to take, a, if I say a hard pencil, the reason is because it's, it's, sh it's, it's sharper, it's more defined. Okay, let me get my glasses, my Dame Edna's on, and I'll just show you. For example, if I turn, if I go over like that, if we look, come in tighter so you can see what I'm doing. Right, so you can see here. I've got most of it down, but I've I've deliberately missed out a couple of bits of the horses, okay? And the reason that I've done that is so that I could show you, if you're new to this, how how, effic how efficient a light wave is. So now we've got a light source, you see, and then I can come in and I can bring my, my image in over the top, right? And then when I, when I turn it over, I've still got my image here, obviously. And the other thing is, when, I'm do when you're doing it this way, you're also translating it or transferring it in, in the same... You haven't flipped it, yeah? You haven't flipped it, so you're not doing the reflection. You're actually doing the actual. Um, another thing that I wanted to point out was when I... When I started, when I started doing this, okay, some of the lines I couldn't see them very well, and the reason was because I was I'd, I'd drawn them very lightly. You see, now that's not so good when you go to um, when you go to trace it or transfer it. So, so let me just explain. 
I'm using a hard pencil um, to trace a really fine line here. Now, if I want to see through the paper or through the card or whatever, if I take one of the softer ones, a B pencil, like, I mean, HB, probably the bog standard one that you've got would work for both. I, I personally think that an H pencil, a harder pencil, gives you a finer line. And the B pencil, 2B, 3B, 4B, the, 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 light, the higher the number, the softer and the blacker they get. So if, for example, let me show you. It, let me take this, turn that off. If we come in here, if I can't see what I'm doing, if I can't, right, let's have a look. look so go like that. Hang on, one, two, three. So you can't really see much there, let's say. Let's just do it on the side. Now, if I use a black pencil, 2B, there you go. And I can see it much better now. Do you see? So that what I'm trying to say is, all you've got to do is, this is, you see how I accentuated the, the horses? Because I couldn't see them very well. So I just went back over with a blacker pencil. I mean, it's just, you know, it's six of one and a half dozen of the other. It's entirely up to you how you transfer your your art to your to your surface, whatever your surface may be. But I'm the way I do it, and I'm not saying I this, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do this. But I prefer to use um, a soft pencil, soft pencil, and a hard pencil, depending on. And if it's at all possible, then I'm definitely going to use a, I'm definitely going to use a light wave. Um, so I just finish off these now and I can show you, because obviously I darkened the line art on the tracing paper before we all got together, just so that I could see. So I've got the, oh, one more leg, one more leg missing. There you go. And the other thing is, if you're missing a bit, you can always go back, aren't you? And the other thing that I did, I just wanted to flag this up because on the original one, let me turn the light off for a minute. On the original one, I only did two panels like this of the, of the tapestry border. And yet on my actual tapestry, you'll see I've got it in all the corners. But I didn't need to do it four times. I only needed to do it once. And then, especially because I'm using a light wave, We've got two different sizes of these. This is the big one. This is the big one that I'm using. And then there's a smaller one. And both of them have got a special price on them. I did ask Paul to do that. You did that, didn't you, love? So, um, yeah, check that out. Um, because even a small one, you, well, the large one's ideal. But if, you, if it doesn't stretch to that, then the smaller one is a little bit less expensive, obviously, and, and you just have to shuffle your artwork around. The light source is the light source. It's still the same brightness. It's not because it's smaller, it's not as bright. That's not the case. But what I wanted to show you was with this particular, have a look at this particular pattern. So I just had the two pieces, right? So then all I did was I made it black, and you know now I used a B pencil to do that so I could see it really easily. And then what I did was I started traveling around. I only need these two panels. Right, watch. So then I did that. And then if I wanted to do it over here, right, watch. Let's, let's go to light wave. One, two, three. Right. Then I'll go to this one and you can see it there. Yeah. And then I, I traced it in there. And then if I wanted to bring it down here, then I flip it. So I turn to the back, right, oh, the magic of, so I get the pattern and it sits then there and then I can fill it in there. And then if I want it down here, right, if I want it down this area, then I flip it over again and I fill it in there. So I, because it's symmetrical, I was able to take this little panel and use it all in all the corners, yeah? And then the middle one, I changed the design a little bit and you can see, well, you can't see because I did it, I, I did it really lightly with a, with a, uh, with a soft, with a hard pencil because I was testing out my, my design, right? Let's turn that off for a minute so you can see what I'm doing. See, so I, I had my design here 
Now, if I go to trace that, I can't really see it. So what I'm going to do is take a soft pencil. This is the point, see? And then I'll take my soft pencil and I'll redefine exactly what I want. There we go. This is my, as far as I'm concerned, this is my pattern. And I want to do a little bit of a calligraphy thing like that. Because so that'll be really nice. There you go. That's all I wanted to do at the top, see? Like that. That one's a bit big. And it's never, it doesn't matter. You know what? Because this is, it's a guideline. So now I can turn this over. Now I can see it. You see? So if I turn that in there now, and I look for my middle part, there it is. And I can put that in there like so. So it's in the right place. Away with the black pencil. In with the H pencil, the hard one, and then I'm going to bring my, my paper. See, then I'll bring it in. There you go. So now I've got my... And this little pattern, I can change that. See, I didn't like that bit. Right. So now I've got my pattern in the top, you see, and I can use this wherever I, wherever I want to. That's the so that's the bottom line. That's how you use a light wave, and this is using, for example, buff paper, which is thin enough to be able to see through. And then this morning, at about I don't know five o'clock in the morning, I had another moment of clarity because I thought because I was thinking about this as you do, and I was I was thinking, what about parchment? I bet that would look really cool. So then. Right, I went to parchment, and if I show you, here we go. Let me put my glasses on again. And what I did was, so this would be a lot of you who've been in the craft along with me. You'll be, you'll know exactly how I did this. If we take, for example, let's take a, a, a parchment, and there are different ones, aren't there? So this is an Indian summer one, and you can see that it's very glossy on one side. Little quick recap, and it's dull on the other side. So this is the front, right now. They're a dark parchment, darker. This is a bit more dramatic, isn't it? The turquoise. So let's take those two. Um, the one that I used to show you is that one. So let's take these, right? This is Indian summer parchment. Again, the, this is we've super price. Um, so in in the parchment packs, you've got 48 sheets in there, 12 different designs, and four of each. So you've got like a lot. Okay. But it's the translucency that's interesting for this particular job. And do you remember when we was we were stamping before uh, with the butterflies in the moment of clarity? Paul will give you the link if you're interested in that. We were stamping um, with the with the butterflies. So here, instead of stamping, we're going to doodle. See, so when you this gets real, this is really efficient actually. So say for example, we take. Um, I'll do, put that one to one side. Let's take our, our piece of artwork again. Here we go. All right, so we take our piece of artwork. Now, if you've got light parchment, see, and you're going you're gonna to draw on the dull side. Remember, the, the, the back is the glossy side where we can erase the artwork of it colour. So let's say we want to put a bit of blue in the top. So you put blue in the sky. And then this is the best pit. You don't even have to... <laughs> all right instant art you don't even have to pencil it you've got your you've got your artwork here look it's that light you don't even need a light wave however having said that right so i could take now my micron pens right the 01 and the 05 you, you we remember we use these a lot don't we when we're doodling right there are seven different ones, and I'm using the smallest one and the next to smallest one. So now, for example, I can go straight in on my artwork on a piece of parchment. I don't, I can but add a bit of masking tape so it doesn't move, right? And I can go straight in. Now, if your eyes aren't, you know, brilliant, look at the difference. When you put the light wave on it, you, it makes it a lot easier. That's all I'm saying, right? On, on a lot of the light colours like this, you can see through anyway. So I can definitely see through on that one. Let's take this one. It's a little bit busier, you see? Because you got it's a little bit more 
there's a lot more going on in this one it's a bit cloudier but doesn't mean it won't work and this is where your light wave one two three then it really changes the game see so it's when you're working with the real dark colors like this one this is quite dark i love this um if we take that one so it gets more and more difficult especially in the darker area say that area there right so you want to put it in there a bit darker one one two three and straight away you can see i can see exactly where the flag is i can so so that's how this works if i if i go to the one that i've already done okay you see how i changed it a little bit only because it, i started up too high it's because i was leaving enough room for the horses that's all but you can see how how easy this is to just literally draw straight through and if i want it so i moved i just made the 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 flag a bit shorter here right but say for example i wanted to put the horses in let's just put the jousters in so what i'll do is i'll tape it into place you don't what i'm trying to say is in my clumsy way here on a monday morning you don't have to go with pencil at all you go straight in with a pen so now i've i've attached it like this okay and then when i come up here right, and i'm happy with my layer i've got it in the right place now i can decide do i want to use uh, 05 or 01 let me just get a bit of a 01 and i can see the horses and i can see the jousters and i'm going to go straight in at crash helmet uh, there we are and i can go straight in with my micron pen and whether i choose to use the number number one tool or if i want to get really fine on the faces for example maybe uh here you you can see there is a big difference between the but this is these are permanent these are these are permanent pens you just need to let them dry right and you can use it's entirely up to you also there is a pressure thing if if you're pressing really hard it will get it it gets blacker there you go so i could use the number one and just guide the pen around gently and and then actually not not it won't be as dark you see so you've got different variations of blackness oh there you go um and you can see how easy you can just transfer straight from your your line up here onto here if i weren't using a light wave let me just take out the light i can still see it and if i can't then the trick this is a this is a bypass the light wave job if you haven't got a light wave then all you've got to do is take a darker pencil at the back and darken your line art so say for example you can't see the 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 i won't call it a blanket the thing the horse has got on <laughs> the, the, the mantle that sounds a bit more romantic right if you can't see the lines in the mantle let me show you if i come in here and i take a black pencil is this a black one 2b see 2b not quite as black as the others but there let me just put the the stitching in then when i see now you can see it much better so so you just make the back darker and then you can see it or you go with the light wave bingo now so once we've done that right i just wanted to show you that this is all um this is interesting stuff you know loads of different options if i turn this over just in case you're not familiar with the parchment idea because you know the moment of clarity is a different a different thing isn't it to to the shack shack but what's really cool with this let me let me show you this if for example let's take that out of the way for a moment we've drawn on this side which is the dull side and when i turn it over see how there's one little girl that really stands out doesn't she one of the ladies in waiting she seems to be standing out a lot if i take a white rubber and i 
But not on this side, not on the side I drew on, because I'll just erase the I'll erase the uh, the black ink. But on the other side of the parchment, you can take out the colour. And this was me at five o'clock this morning. I thought that would look so cool. So look how lovely that is. Isn't that super? I think so. I'm just checking. I, Paul's written something and I can't see it because it's too far away. <laughs> Got the wrong glasses on. But you see how you can take out colour? You can actually raise the colour from the designer paper. And these white rubbers, these white erasers, that's exactly what they're built for. But doesn't that look sharp? Look. And then even in the darker area, let's say where the flag is now. So what I could do is eliminate, let's take a little bit out, but let's use this to create light and shade. So rather than take out, just white it out completely, how about you know, the light's hit in there, then it goes in and then it comes out and it hits here again. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually using the, the parchment colour to create depth. You see how nice that looks? Then this is going to be dark in here. The light's going to hit here. So we'll just take out a bit of the colour there. See what I mean? And then the light's going to hit here again. And all the time, I'm aware of the light source. Doesn't that look pretty, right? And this is the back of the parchment. This is the back that we're working on. When I flick it over to the front, of course, it's exactly the same. But you see how you can you can use the the parchment to create fabulous um, light tricks. You just got to make sure you're on the right side. You're always on the shiny side when you're doing this. So again, the light's going to hit here, isn't it? Let's let's hit, make the light hit there for a start, and then we won't take it all out. We won't black it out completely or white it out completely. We we'll just take a little bit out. See, so the light's hitting there. Another thing you want to know, um, or what you should know, is the red rubber, you've got white rubbers and you've got red rubbers, and the red rubber is a softer, it's a softer re razor, and it, it creates a graduation. The white one's pretty radical. We've got double-ended ones as well. So, for example, you can take out the colour there, like 100%, there you go, right to white, like boom really nice but then if you want to graduate it you've got choices you can either use the white one and just feather through like this which is you know it's possible or you take the red one the red rubber and then what that will do is it would create like um a graduation see how it creates a graduation always always on the right side on the on the back but how cool is this look See, you just got to always remember, you'll only do this once. If you, if I was to rub this out now, all of a sudden the black would be gone. <sighs> the black would just disappear because this is an ink eraser. The white, the hard is an ink eraser. But I, I, I love doing this. I, I find it very, very effective. Look, so this one's at the front. So we'll add a bit of white and stare. And that looked good. And you know that I could add, oh, hang on a minute. What side am I on? Well, hey, nearly. Right. See, so what you can do is you can add whiteness in here, look. So you're starting to add shadow. Oh, I love this. I think that looks so cool. Look. Hmm? So there you go. That was a little mini tutorial on how to use designer parchment with your with your um, traced artwork. Uh -huh. See? You use instead of stamping, what we're doing is we're doodling onto parchment, and then and then you're off and running. And if it's dark, dramatic parchment, then treat yourself to a light wave. Okay, so that's all that. And what we're going to do, though, we're going to stick to the plan because I did say, much as I'd really love to to get into the parchment side of it, because I think that just looks phenomenal. What else? You wouldn't want to add any colour, really, if you if you started shading with the white. Wouldn't that just... Oh, well, I rest my case. I feel tempted to give that one a go. What about you? But what I want to do, though, because I'm going to stick to the plan 
of what we what we actually agreed which was we're going to go with the buff paper and then we'll do the shading and the gray so that's the end of that little jobby and now do i need my no i don't need my light wave anymore now because i've done all my transferring my light wave's always here you know when we first brought them on we brought them on for the parchment art actually that was what the idea was you know to to help with parchment art with with groovy and that and um and every parcher was swears by these things you know the light waves so but for me personally as a as a a paper crafter these are, i've always used a light wave always because you work in layers you see so they're a they're a fabulous piece of kit really but you know necessary i don't know depends what you're doing you can work without them if you have to if you can afford them brilliant now let's have a look at this one shall we so we're going to put our lovely masterpiece to one side because you can see how how often you can use it can't you and now what we're doing is we're we're going for the inking this is it this is this is the best part for me is the inking because i've done all the job i've done the work i'm just going to come out a little bit so you can see it you can't see a thing can you so i'm gonna do you know what i'm gonna have to do i'm gonna take my pens have you done your inking already it's the best part 005 and 01 they're the ones i'm going to work for and i'm going to work on this area here I work on my favourite bit, the people, and then I'll go from there. Yeah. All right, so if I work with the people, the people, right, come in really tight so you can see it, and I'll make sure, here we go, and I'll make sure you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'll stay in, I'll stay in vision. Right, so these little fellas, let's have a look. I've got a... 05, I've got an 05, and I've got a, a 005, sorry, and I've got a 1, which is a little bit blacker, but I'm, I'm testing them over here, look, see? And then I've got everything in between if I don't press too hard. So I think I'll go with the 01, but, but not pressing hard. There you are. And we'll get the right glasses on. And then we'll settle in. This is the best part of the job. Right, let's get our eye in. We'll start over here and we'll work this way. If you want to lean on something like a piece of paper so you don't put your, sh your hand on your artwork all the time, you can always use a piece of paper or something like that. There you go. That'll work. Let me get all these rulers out of the way. Right. Right, are you ready? Here we go. Check and off we go so we're going to just start our our inking up and and i think a lot of it has to do with just committing you know don't be nervous about doing this because you know this is just a piece of paper. It's not, it's, it, there's nothing valuable here. Don't get caught up worrying about whether you go over the lines or they look a bit ropey or, is my head in the way or am I okay like this? Just, and if the lines are too thick, see, I'm almost tempted. In a minute, I'm going to do the outlines and the necks with the number one and the crown. And then I think I'll swap. So I'm trying not to press hard. But I also want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So, right, here comes the queen. Here comes Queenie. I'll go back in and do the noses afterwards with a thinner pen for sure. She looks a bit fearsome. Might have to make her a bit more delicate. 
Yeah. So as you come round, you see, I love this. Have a look. Okay, then we've got the old Sir Lancelot in the background there. A bit dodgy. Give him a pair of ears. He's got a neck like a... Like my thigh. Right, see, and as soon as you... This is the best part for me. As soon as I start inking up, everything else just, it's just relaxing. I'll give him a pair of ears. It just works. Here we go. Very, very gently does it. Hmm? Right. Yeah. And so what we do here, you see, we've done all the the designing and now we're just penning. And once we've penned, then we can add a little flash of colour if we want to, can't we? We've got here. Whose arms where here? Is that his let's put her shoulder in there and bring him round the back. And let's put him in front of her. That's it. And then the king's behind the queen. That'll work. And the king's going to have chain mail like that. And he's got his shoulders there. And she's quite delicate. And then we're going to bring her here we go, like that. How are we doing? It's relaxing, isn't it? Are you doing it with me now? Right, let's have a look. I just need to check something because I noticed that the batteries were running low on the mic. What have we got here? Oh, could be. Let me just check something. Down to the last one. I may just go quiet for a minute while I change the batteries. And what we're going to do now, because I'd hate to run out. Let's do, I'm swapping now to the number one and I'm going to do their noses now. And do you remember we just did, an, that was all I did. I did a line and then a little, he's got a moustache. So he was like, like that. She had a... And you can change the way they look at each other just by the angle of the line. See, they're looking at each other. She's looking in the opposite direction. He's not sure what he's looking at. And she's just wishing she was somewhere else. Right, there you go. Okay. And then we can put the necks in like that. Right. Easy. Hey. Eh? I think so, and I think she needs some little gems on her. Now, with the very fine one, see, we can start to add our... There. I'm barely touching the paper now. That looks nice. Hey, listen. There was, a, there was a twofer going on. So these two sisters, they had a, there was a bog off. <laughs> so they both got stuck with the same hats. Speaking of sales, <laughs> we've got the wiggy going on again. Big job, because um, it was extremely popular. Do you know what would look really nice? Would be a little feather or something, I wonder. Um, it was very popular a couple of weeks ago. So I said, have a look in the cupboard and see what else we've got. <laughs> and so we started another wiggy week. When it's gone, it's gone week. So there's some really nice, really lovely stuff again. Uh, half price, of course. So that's worth having a look. I'm going to use this. Have a look and see if there's anything that you fancy. Some pretty good stuff, I have to say.
I think the the one that I I, I actually rang Paul and, and checked because I said, "Is that right? Have we put them in?" <laughs> he said, "Yeah, you told us to." Um, <laughs> I said, "Did I? Did I?" <laughs> These are half price. <laughs> the Perga colours. Because I saw a. Fl these are these are um, the the offer of the week, and uh, so they're they're half price this week, which is like the Wiggig sale half price, and they don't sell out these ones. These are not a when it's gone, it's gone. These are the offer of the week. But I saw the orders flying through today with these on them, and I thought, what's going on? Why are they so cheap? <laughs> and I, Paul said, well, it's your idea. So okay, <laughs> they're very good. <laughs> they're very good. They work beautifully on parchment, in fact. And on paper, though. So um, let me just, I'm using this. I don't want to do it with a ruler. Come on, Barbara. Do it by hand. It looks so much better. Right, just go along. It looks more authentic. I want it to look a bit more real, if that's a possibility. Right, that's better. And then we're going to do this bit here. Right, and then I might have to change the batteries. So I know I've been talking a lot about, you know, different gear, parchment and pencils and pens and perga colours and light waves and, you know, and tracing paper and this paper and buff paper. And, 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 you know, sometimes you look at all that and you think, well, I haven't got half of that. And I don't, I don't really, I don't, you know, I don't know if I, if I need it all. And, and the fact of the matter is it is a wants and needs thing. Do you need it? Well, I don't know. It depends. It depends what you want to do, you know, what you want, do you want, if you, if you want to pursue, if you want to pursue um, your artwork and you want to, oh, what have I got here? I'm going to go with the fatter one this time. Then you want, and you want to doodle and you want, then possibly you do need a set of these pens, okay? If you want to, if you want to get that parchment shading trick going, you you need one of them white rubbers. You certainly might treat yourself to a a pad of parchment. It's it depends how how keen you are to to do to do to do art to craft. You know, I think that's that's the, the, the only you can answer that really. Um, I think. Oh, I haven't put the the thing on the top. Now, do I want to go this way or do I want to go that? I'm going to go, right, I turn the artwork round, make the artwork come to me, and I'm going to bring it into the point. That's the way I want to work. Like that. Right, that's more like it. Um, I, I blogged about all the gear and no idea and the stash and what have you yesterday i think it was yesterday and um because my my son mark he's he's into golf at the moment. I, I, you maybe read my blog and he's, he's, he's he says something brilliant to me the other day because it was his birthday and um and so i was i was um speaking to him i haven't seen him for nearly two years now people that's too long you know but anyway, he's hey, he's safe and he's okay. But so he, um, it was his birthday all coming out. And I said, oh, because he's right into golf at the moment. He lives in California. And I said, I, I, I offered to buy him a, a golf bat or a stick or a club or whatever. And uh, and he's, I said, you know, because I know they're very expensive, aren't they? Some of them are hundreds of dollars just for one golf stick, bat, ball, club. And um, and I said, w would would I buy him one? And he said, to be honest, Mum, he said at this stage, it's m more about the um, the wizard than the wand, <laughs> which I thought was brilliant. He said, I'd rather have an hour's lesson with a golf pro. I think I'd get more out of that, or or just go down the range and hit a bucket of balls. 
He said, because at this stage, I loved it when he said, it's, it's, it's more about the wizard than the wand. And I, I guess that's it, isn't it? You can have all the stash. You can have all the gear, all the stash. But if you're not, if you don't know what to do with it, you know, you, you need a little bit of tuition, don't you? And I suppose in a very effortless, low key way, that's what the Shack Shack does. And that's what the craft alongs in the moment of clarity and, you know, the workshops and retreats. I mean, we try really hard, you know, the, the step by steps. And there is, I know this because I do pottery. And, and, what what's what would be the point of a wheel if I didn't get some tuition from somewhere? I you know I could go through bags and bags and bags of clay before I figure out how to center and how to do this and how to do it, and then I wouldn't know how to wedge the clay. And so you need the tuition. You you know I've got the wands. I've got the wands, lots of them. I've got a garage full of wands now, but it's the wizard that needs the help. And I and I love the way Mark put that. I'd rather have an hour with a golf pro, man. Yeah. So, so let me just let me just check one more time because I just know that little old battery. I'm getting tight with my batteries, aren't I? Oh no, I think we could get away with it till the end. <laughs> Let's see. And what else is going on this week? We've got this, the offer of the week with the perk. Has we got? Um, uh, um, yeah, we've got the wig gig sale. If you've got a wish list, if there's stuff that you fancy that you haven't got. Right, let's put that flag in. That's what I'm going to put in next. Make the artwork come to you, you know. What have I got here? Is this a number one? Yeah, number one. Turn the artwork. Make it come to you. Be, be comfortable with the art when you're turning it. I don't even need that behind there either. Right, so now let's go. Um, tomorrow... Paul's in the Shack Shack doing groovy, groovy Tuesday. So he's there. After this Shack, I'm going to get on the old phone to Linda and we're going to make a plan going forward for next week. I think that'll, that'll be fun. I think that'll be really fun to bring Linda in from Wales. So we're going to get a double act. Linda and Paul, sounds like the McCartney. <laughs> Right, um, so tomorrow we've got the Groovy Tuesday. And then, um, and the, oh yeah, and then um, Wednesday we're back together again. So I wonder whether, I wonder if you'd be up for it. How would you feel about Finishing up this um, inking, what we're doing here, okay. So, and then on, on Wednesday when we get together, I think what would be really great would be if we could, once we've done all the inking, if we could... Um, do some shading, do some pencil work, get the old white pencils out, the perga liners and the grey polychromos. Hey, because that I think that's going to look superb on the buff. The white, get that white going, don't you? I think so. And if you're, if you're, doing artwork and you're not sure oh, I don't know, I'm not sure whether I want to do this or that or you know if you if you feel like that or you, then then just my advice if I'm allowed to give it is just when in doubt hang about don't just don't do anything if you're not sure you think well, hang on a minute I I don't know whether I want to do this or this if that's what you feel I feel there's something missing here should we do that there, that's better. Now it speaks to me. Um, if you're if you're feeling that it's it's 
you're missing something or something's something's not right or shall I do it this color or shall I do it that color when you're not sure stop just stop see now this is this is where it gets good because once you've got all the inking bit down and you've done all this the the, the jousters see then you can go in let's say for example this fella here right so I've got him like to this stage let's say and then I want to add um, a pattern on his, on the horse or on the, this is where you go back to your pencil. This is me personally. I wouldn't go straight in with ink. I'd go, even if this was all ink, let's just, let me just humor me for a minute. Let's pretend right, that I've inked up everything here like this, because this is what you probably will do mm, before Wednesday. So I want to kind of give you the, the heads up on this. Let's just let's do his, his armor. And then, all right, so that'll do. And then we've got his pantaloonies on and his feet. They look a bit weird. That's better. Okay, a bit clumpy. Right, and then, um, so it comes around the back there, and then we've got his the horses, the hooves. They look better than they did when we first started out. God, do you remember? <laughs> Toilet plunger. Someone called it a kitchen plunger. Hilarious. Right. So, so let's say, for example, let's just do this horse. Let's just assume that we've done that much. Right. And we've got the old, the mantle in place. We've done all this. We're happy enough with what we've done so far. Right, ear, eye. Okay, so we've got the basic horse in. Now we want to add um, a pattern. So say for example, in this area here at the bottom, I wanna come round here like that and then uh, the inside may be different. And perhaps this once this is going to be like a coat of arms or a pattern or a design. Okay, there's no way that I would go in with a with a pen and start doodling until I'm absolutely ha happy that that is what I want. Right. So, I, for example, I really like I love Caro or Checker. I think Checkers always look super. They just hit the spot every time, don't they? So let's do this, right? And then and then run through there like that. Oh hey, right? So so now I've got my checker, let's say. And then I'm going to make sure that I get the right ones. So I'm not even going to leave that to chance that I hit the right spot. You see? Now one, two, three. So I'm going to actually give myself a, a guide of where the black's going to be. Only because otherwise, as soon as you get to the feet, it goes wrong. Look. So that's black, that's black, that's black, and that's black. So once I've done that, then I take my pen. And now I'm happy to pen in my, the cloak, the pattern that I want to use, see? But I certainly wouldn't. Go straight to the without without checking what I'm doing. You see what I mean? If I want it to be nice, because I tell you what, you would not be frustrated if you did all this, and then and then it went peak tong on the on the horse's blanket. <laughs> Look, I'm going a bit wrong here because I'm larking about now. That's all right. I can always correct myself. <laughs> That's what happens when you muck about, Grey. Right, what are we doing here? Okay, like that. I think this would be all right. There we go. Right in and round. Okay. So, and then, see, it's easy once you've got your... See, I think this would look lovely. I'm definitely going to go black and white black and then a different color like red or 
something. Yeah? But the point I'm making is that you do this before. Do it in pencil first. Hey, give yourself half a chance. I always, it always baffles me with parchers that they go straight to the parchment. I think, I, I think I'd have to do it in pencil first. <laughs> Here we are. But doesn't that look cool? Well, it will look cool when it's finished. And what I'm going to do now is go along the bottom bit so that I, so that's going to be black. And that's going to be black. Right, do you know what? I actually think I could get to the end without going wrong. <laughs> there we are. So, I think that will bring us nicely there. That will bring us nicely to the end of our, our inking session. That doesn't mean that I'm finished, but what it does mean is, let me just come out a little bit. There we go. It does mean that I've given you all the tips and tricks um, to finish the job. And I'm going to I'm going to be back here on Wednesday at 10 o'clock. I will have inked all of this up onto the, the tapestry will be ready to go. And then, just so that you know what I'm going to bring to the party, I haven't quite sorted them all out yet, but I've got some lovely greys from the Perga, there's some really nice greys, I think I might, you need a white one, you've got to pick a colour palette really haven't you, I think I might go, I might go with this sort of colour, I think that might look really lovely, so you've got greys and pinks and blues and white, see white on this really stands out, hang on, let me do it on a piece of tester, See, looks so nice. Yeah, there you go. So, so what we'll do is on um, on Wednesday, we'll get back together again, and we'll add shade and dimension and colour. How's that sound? I'm looking forward to that. So I've got to finish the inking. We'll do that. We'll do that in between times, and then. Um, yeah. And then on Wednesday at 10 o'clock, we'll get back together and we will do this. How's that sound? Are we up for it? This chair keeps coming down. <laughs> so thank you very much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed that session. Paul, thank you for your help. Now don't forget there's a wig gig sale. Don't forget the offer of the week. That was, that was, yeah. Well, there you go. Boom. A job's a good, that's, that's a good, that is a, that's a bargain, that one. Right, now, let me see. And other than that, Groovy Tuesday tomorrow, I've got a TV show on Friday, a mixed media show, uh, showcasing some beautiful stamps in the craft store. So I'm looking forward to that one. And other than that, just be safe. Be safe, happy, and creative. Yeah? One day at a time. Just one day at a time. It will be fine. It will be fine. Just one day at a time. Your job today is to get through today. That's all. Don't look too far ahead. Don't look at, don't just stick to the plan. Stick to the plan. And if you get anxious and if you worry a little bit and things start crowding in your head, then get a piece of paper out and try and draw our jousters you know, and ink them up. That's what you want to do, you know. Get out of your head and get with those hands. It works every time for me. And when I switch off in a minute, I'm going to sit here for half an hour and I'm going to finish inking this up. And I hope that you do the same thing. So lots of love. Thanks for your company. And I shall see you on Wednesday at 10 o'clock. Bye-bye now. <laughs>